This case history is that of a male patient, a 10 year old boy. I don't have any more case history than that, but I do have his audiogram. So we've got a normal um, audiogram on the left hand side, but we do have a um, sort of mild mid to low frequency uh, looking conductive hearing loss on the right hand side. We've also got a bit of a dip at eight kilohertz. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the bone conduction at four kilohertz, but it has been masked in the low frequencies, which is super helpful for us. We also have his OAEs. So the TE OAEs were performed here. Now the um, left-hand side is a very clear pass. On the right-hand side, we've got three bands that have passed if we're using a minus 10 um, response floor. Now that would probably pass most criteria around the world. Would you agree with me, Lillian? I think some different places have different pass criteria, but on the whole, I think this would this would pass most people's um, OAE pass criteria. Yes, what we have to to note for the OAEs is that it's quite often that we look at a threshold of uh, twenty five to thirty five in in looking at whether it's normal or not. And we are looking at for the pass refer, so the the screening uh, version of it. Uh, whether two out of three or three out of four has passed. And that would be the case uh, on both the right and the left side here. But interestingly, the right is not as robust as on the left-hand side, which goes hand in hand with the audiogram. So shall we have a look at the wideband tympanometry results? First of all, we've got our 3D graph. Um, now, I mean, initially I'm looking at the left-hand side and thinking that looks pretty okay but the right hand side is very very different what what what's going on here Lillian what can you see for the left hand side just for looking at these we see an amount of energy um, that looks quite normal uh, being absorbed there's a lot of energy being absorbed on, on both sides we can see that just on the color indication here on the 3d graph we see an ear canal volume where, where we have a bit of asymmetry uh, which is uh, something we should uh, pay attention to uh, we see a peak pressure that's slightly more negative on, on one side than the other uh, also. So there are some of the, the parameters to uh, take with us in the analysis of what's potentially going on uh, in the ear here. But, but interestingly that we have an asymmetry, um, so it's likely to be a condition that's different from the left and right ear, even though that the, the two graphs are having a, a lot of energy being absorbed. Okay, fantastic. Let's have a look at the tympanograms page. So on the left hand side, first of all, um, now these peaks are quite tall peaks, aren't they? Particularly the, the wide band average uh, tympanogram that that looks like it's above the normal or the normative gray shaded area. What, what, what are you taking from this? Yes, so so from the uh, wide band uh, average, it's an indication of uh, the classification that it could be a potential AD curve, where that's not the case of the 226. Um, so that should uh, raise our awareness of uh, what is actually going on in the middle ear here. Is it a normal uh, middle ear that we're looking into, or is there a certain condition that we need to be aware of on this left side? Okay, and what could that potentially be if we're looking at a, a sort of a higher compliance, as it were? Well, in, in the case here, we would know that we have a movement that's greater than normal. So that could be a potential disarticulation uh, in there. That could be, uh, as we also know from the traditional uh, classification of the 226. Um, however, here, yeah, pay attention to that we have a different other 226 and the white band uh, average because we are with the uh, average looking at additional frequencies from 375 up to 2000, uh, which may provide us with the picture that the 226 on its own does not. Absolutely. It's giving us a bit more data, isn't it? So let's have a look at the right hand side. Um, now we've got flat, flat, flat across the board here. Um, is there anything that you can can take from this that would help interpret, uh, help guide your interpretation? Uh, well, I then think again of the audiogram that I had, and I think of the three D curve, um, where I recall that we had a um, quite great amount of energy being absorbed. Uh, we also have an ear canal volume uh, that's quite uh, big. Um, so, th and together with the flat curve that we see here on both the two to six on this side and the um, the wide band average, that could be a potential indication that there is a uh, a hole in the eardrum. Okay, so I guess the next thing we need to look at is our absorbance graph. 
Um, on the left hand side, this doesn't look hugely out of the normal range for me, out of the normative curve there, but it is it is a bit raised around the one thousand hertz region. What would you what would you take from this? Together with the wideband average, what we saw, uh, I would stay, still pay attention to whether we are having a potential disarticulation here in this regard. We know that the cases of the absorbance curve that is causing an increased amount of energy being absorbed, that is uh, the disarticulation, it's the hole in the eardrum, and it's a potential of SCD. Um, so it's, it's one of these three cases that it could potentially be. Uh, we cannot tell just by looking at this graph here on its own, but we can uh, sh give a sure indication uh, by having uh, the rest of the uh, tests in our test box um, and, and put them together to see what's potentially going on. And we had a relatively normal ear canal volume on the left-hand side. So that would, would that rule out the possibility of a hole in the eardrum on the left ear? Or is there still a possibility that that could be involved in some way? I would say most likely it's not, but that's because of the asymmetry. We actually saw volume that was a lot greater on the other side. Um, so if we had a hole here also, um, it is at least with a, a volume that's, uh, or a ear canal we're looking into, that's, uh, that's smaller uh, and also with the middle ear. Okay, interesting. Well, let's have a look at the right-hand side. Now, this is quite different. There's a lot of peaks going up and down um, on this side. Now, this ear, we, we've just mentioned we had a much larger ear canal volume than on the left. Um, and this really represents the peaks that we saw in the 3D graph as well. So what would you, what would you take from this one? So based on the audiogram that we saw, uh, the wideband uh, 3D graph, the average uh, and the ear canal volume in the parameters, I would uh, be more and more certain that what we're looking at on this side here, that is a hole in the eardrum. Okay. And now you mentioned the the issue on the left-hand side, uh, possible SCD, possible disarticulation, possible perforation. We're thinking probably not a perforation because of the ear canal volume. Could it be something like a healed perforation? It could potentially be uh, in here also um, where we see that the absorbance is a little bit greater than normal um, in supporting that, uh, whether that's the case. Uh, it is something we, we can ask also a bit more about in regards to the case history to have that confirmed. Absolutely. Our toscopy could be quite uh, quite useful there and knowing what's happened with this patient previously would, uh, I think, help put it, bring it all together so that we know what's going on with that absorbance graph. Thank you so much.